失礼着席の前に一度拘束させていただくちょっと勝手に目も当てられぬうかつさだなこの拘束具は私の霊圧を消すのではなく私の近くにとどめておくことしかできないお前たちが触れればどうなるかなど語らずとも知れよう Aizen reminding everybody that he's him and you cannot mess with him. All those guys from Central 46, they thought they could just pull up on Aizen. I mean, what were they thinking? This is a man who's a threat to the freaking Soul King, and they're out here thinking they could fight him. Like, that's just insane. <clears throat> like, that's just not going to happen, guys. So, you know, they, they they're basically Kill Raku came down to get Aizen out of his cell. He had three keys because Aizen has all these restraints on him. I forgot how many keys there is. There's like over 10, I think. And、uh, the rest are like embedded in his body. And basically, it's so that like if Aizen kills him, the, the, everybody will know. Like those other guys will be able to like know that he's dead somehow, then like seal them in this realm for eternity. Like it's the dead zone or something. And Aizen won't be able to get out. But it turns out that Aizen already is able to like walk around. Pretty much even without any of these keys, he's so powerful. He's just sitting there and you know, growing more and more powerful, even with all the restraints. Probably as an effect of the Hokioku, because remember, the Hokioku is just like very, very broken. That, that was the thing when he was fighting Ichigo, is he just continues to evolve and evolve and get stronger and stronger. And he's immortal. That's why I always thought it was funny when you know, people were saying like Madara could beat him and other characters from like other series that are in the, like, the same ballpark. Because like Isaac could just keep evolving and evolving on top of the fact that he's freaking immortal. So he's just like incredibly OP, and let's not forget his, you know, Kyogosugetsu, and then we haven't even seen his Bankai or anything like that. Aizen is insane. But yeah, they came to get Aizen to help him fight Bak. And, anyways, this episode's not really about Aizen, it's really about Ukitaki. We find out that Ukitaki, a big twist here, especially for the people that only watch the anime, is that he was a very sickly boy, and his parents pray to this. Deity that's in the Soul Society that turns out it was the hand of the Soul King that basically, I guess, fell out of the Soul King's realm for some reason down down there and it became like just like a statue <laughs> that they worship. And but they know it's like a real thing and they so they prayed to it to cure his lung disease and they really、like, cure his lung disease, but it like in it basically used his body as a host to keep him alive. So that one day he could be like a stand in for the Soul King, which is what he does this episode. Because if you remember in the previous episode, the Soul King got cut in half by Ichigo, thanks to Bach, basically manipulating him and his、uh, Quincy powers. So he's using the, the, the Soul King's hand now that、uh, fell off to try to like save the Soul King and keep the Soul King alive. And interestingly enough, this is one of the few things, the only thing actually so far, that Bach was not able to see with his Almighty. So we know the limitation now of Bach's power. He can't see anything that is related to the Soul King's powers. So he can like clap Ichibe, he could clap all the captains, he could see, you know, foresee everything, but he, you know, anything the Soul King does with his powers, it's beyond him, which makes sense as the Soul King ranks behind, ranks above Bach because he's literally his father, okay? <laughs> he's the father of everything. So the arm reaches out from underneath, you know, the,、uh, the Seirte and basically goes all the way up to the Soul King's realm and, and was able to bring back the Soul King or at least keep him alive for now at the end of the episode, which is very interesting because Orihime tries to revive the, the Soul King and it works for a second, but then it doesn't work. So that, that means that even her powers couldn't revive the Soul King. And that's crazy because if you remember, Orihime. She, she got powers from the Hokioku, which again, as we're saying with Aizen, is very broken and can bring back anything, even things that were completely like vaporized, like Grim Jow's arm. So the fact that she couldn't bring back the Soul King or make him whole, because really he's a fine, he's just like split in half,、um, that's pretty crazy. So, you know, that's just to show you like how broken Bach is and how broke the Quincy powers are that, you know, he, that Ichigo has that he used to kill. Will cut the Soul King in half. Again, he's not dead. He's just like really fucked up. He's on his way to death, and they're having to help him out here. So, we also got cool backstory Ukitake and Kyoraku, and we got to see、um, young Yamoto and all this stuff. So, it was really cool there. Kyoraku, you know, they, they, they first met, they had like a kendo match, and 
he spits blood on Kyoraku's face, and Kyoraku doesn't even say anything. Like, I expected him to say something, he doesn't say anything. Ukitaki afterwards becomes friends with him. He asks him, like, where you get candy, because apparently Kyoraku knows the lowdown on where all to get candy. But it turns out that Ukitaki didn't want the candy for himself, he wanted it for some kids, and it's a big problem because all the candy that Kyoraku gets apparently has alcohol in it. So that was a real funny moment of the episode. I really like that. And, you know, it was just really cool because Ukitaki is kind of like a captain that you really don't hear much about. I remember reading in the manga uh, when this when this happened, it was like, wow, like this guy is, you know, way more important. Everybody was really sleeping on this character. He's a, and that's kind of like about Bleach is there's so much stuff to remember, which is kind of a pain in the ass if you're a reviewer, but it kind of makes it interesting because there's so many characters and characters that you may, you know, look over. They turn out to be way more important later on. And, and that's just really cool that you have all those twists. Also, you know, the animation for this episode was incredible, as always. It, you know, and of course, Aizen looks great. You know, Aizen, man, he's the guy. The reason we named this channel Aizen Ochiha, okay? Because we like Bleach and we liked, uh, you know, Naruto back in the day with Hitachi and Madara. Even though, again, my opinion is I think Aizen would clap Madara in a battle based on the Hokioku. But anyways, yeah, I would say this episode, I will give it a uh, eight and a half out of ten. It was more of a backstory, not a lot, not too much action, but very interesting, you know, building on the lore, which Bleach does, is just excellent at. Um, if you're a Ukitake fan, ten out of ten. <laughs> it's ten out of ten. But yeah, I just want to do a quick review. Wherever you are, have a fantastic day, and peace out.